excited about tonight. Show. Texting, texting, texting. Eight five seven one two six nine. Or hello, hello, Mayday, Mayday, BBD. Are you there? Hello, BBD. <laughs> hello. Are hey, you what, present? Are you present, sir? And if I'm so, not present. Drop the scowl. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to IDD. It is a wet my whistle <laughs> Wednesday. That is the redoubtable one, Tom Izzo. I am the highly questionable one, Arjun Miliaccio. Hey, hey, hey. We are down to eight. <laughs> okay. And I am... Is it the Elite Eight? They should call it that because, honestly, I feel that way about this group. Hmm. I feel like every team that is left legitimately belongs. And there hasn't been many times where I felt that in playoffs. When you get to that that the round before the quarterfinals, before the, that round of eight, whatever. Does it, every team alive like, have a chance to win the Super Bowl? I believe they do. Every team. Every single. Well, I'll, mm. tell you, I'll tell you why. I think there's one that does. I'll tell you why. Because every team left has a quarterback. Ooh, good point. They do. They're not all at the same level. I'm not saying that. But they've all shown signs of coming through in the clutch. Even San Fran. Yeah, that kid especially. Which is crazy. Yeah. So you look at these, and, there's these, and the thing is, every one of them is a good story. I mean, you look at, the, you look at Trevor Lawrence and what the fuck happened last year to him and how he turned around. Doug and Peterson. Doug Peterson, the coach coming Coach back, of the year candidate. Coach of the year candidate, you know. And then you look at fucking Patrick Mahomes, who I don't like, but I got to tell you, he loses Tyreek Hill and goes, Fuck you, and just he's still outside of Travis yeah, Kelsey, yeah. who's on their offense. Well, the the, the running back that I had, the, the the running back was good that I had in a fantasy. Well, McKinnon, football. but like yeah, McKinnon. he's he's not a big name. He's not a household name. No, he's name. not. But he's a dual threat. And he's a damn good yeah. one. And, well, he's um, a dual threat because yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Well, he believes in him. I mean, could get a running well, back yeah, involved. What the quarterback <laughs> can't do is give the man skill, but what he can do is give him confidence. Yeah, and that's just and as give a, him the fucking and, ball, and that's just as a, <laughs> yeah, and that's just as important. <clears throat> Um, and Patrick Mahomes, that's a great story. He loses Tyreek Hill. Everyone says their offense is unbelievable. It hasn't missed a beat. Is hasn't Juju beat. their number one outside of Kelsey? I mean, be, Kelsey is the most elite. He's the best tight end in the league. Yeah, him, I mean, and, him and Kittles. He's their best um, skill position. He's their best player. skill position player, and he's a number one. He's the tight end. Mm -hmm. Like when Gronk, Gronk was the number one, but he was a tight end. Yeah. And there have been tight ends like that, Shannon Sharp and uh, Gonzalez and the other guy, and you know Ben Wintercoats back in the day. They're there. Um, ben Wintercoats, I don't remember him. Drew Bledsoe, that was his binky. Ben, ben Coates. Coates. We called him Ben, ben Wintercoats. Ben I Winter love Coates. that nickname. Oh, he was, he was a big dude. He was a big motherfucker. He was as big as Gronk. The Pats have had some good Very good tight, tight ends. ends. Yeah, he who, was who, the, Russ ben Francis. Watson, ben Watson. Was Russ, ben Watson. Russ Francis. Uh, Pe, you know, Don Hasselback. Did y'all have Michael Bennett? Mm -mm. I know he was in Seattle, right? Or Where was he? Chicago? We had the dude from Green Bay. He came over and won a Super Bowl with us. What the hell is his name? Mm. Uh, uh, damn you're it. talking about. I can't remember his name, but he was good. Who did you? You know the, the Marcellus Bennett. something. Was it Marcellus Bennett? Maybe I don't know, but it was a. Mar I think it was Marcellus, Marcellus Bennett was maybe. was um. Was he in Green Bay? Yeah, maybe he was. His brother was played defense for the Bears, didn't he? Michael Bennett or the Seahawks? That's a good question. I think he played for. the I Seahawks. believe he had a brother in the league. I just don't remember what position he played. Um, but you could be right. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I mean, but if you look at all these quarterbacks. Every the ascension of, of Danny Dimes. Look what that motherfucker's done. That's a hell of a story. I mean, what a hell of a story. Four All years of them. just yeah. shit on yeah. the, the the Giants yeah. declined his fifth year option. I mean, people on the media as of last week were still making fun of him and they were in the fucking playoffs. Even they were still Before people this picking year, on they him. declined his fifth year option. I know, but I'm saying, but people were picking on him all the way up until the minutes right. after. after people still he say did. he sucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This dude's been nothing but amazing. Now, now the story yeah. is, you know, Minnesota's the worst team ever. Basically, you can't look at 13 wins exactly. is 13 exactly. wins. I'm not saying they're a great team, but you win 13 games, you're a good team. Right. You can't win 13 out of 17 to be a bad team. Bad teams don't do that. Bad teams never win 13 out of 17. And there's no stretch where that happens ever in any sport. If you're a bad team, <laughs> you ain't winning 13 out of 17. Ain't fucking happening. Yeah. That's Ain't true. fucking happening, okay? <laughs> Especially not so, in football. Hell fucking no. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, in some sports, you can just get randomly hot. Not that hot. Not, 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 not 17 is hot. Not in football. No, but there's nobody, nobody left. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, this is the, this is the thing. Um, the Minnesota Vikings were a good team. Yeah. They were, okay? 13 wins, you, you can't win. Not if you strong, win 12 in that league. defensively. If you win 12 in that league, you're a good team. They won 13, okay? And the bottom yeah. line is, and if you look at that offense... That offense, talent-wise, don't take a backseat to nobody. Their defense Well, lost. to the Eagles. Their defense lost in that game. They take a backseat to the Eagles. At the end of the day, the Minnesota Maybe. defense, you name me one game where for a game the Minnesota defense shut somebody down that was any good. 
that didn't happen. Oh, yeah, defense, didn't fucking happen defense all year. Defense not good. Never. There were many times the offense. <laughs> the offense won every game this season for them. <laughs> Let's be honest here. They, they did. There was. There, I don't want to talk about the fucking mistake that Josh Allen made by being a moron on the one yard line because that's a bonehead play. That wasn't them. That was Josh Allen. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to give him credit for that. They, they got. They, they gave up 35 points up to that point. They weren't stopping nobody. <laughs> so I'm just like, but the thing is, that offense won all 13 games for them. <laughs> Come hell or high water, they, and well, their special teams won a couple because their special teams beat the Patriots. Yeah. So their special teams won a couple, but that defense didn't win one fucking game for them all year. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, they did. Okay. So I forgot win. it was on camera. My apologies. Excuse me. Wow. Jeez, that was I'm not great. surprised by any of what you just heard. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's not get too anyway, deep. Anyway, too deep. So, in terms of the final eight, I love, I love every damn one of them from the perspective of. I think every one of them is good and they belong. I don't think I think all of them are a belong. Not one of them is a fluke. I don't. And I think all four of these games are going to be awesome this weekend. And we're going to go through every one of them. We're going to end off with you know our boy. And we're thinking of our boy. We got there's another boy who was supposed to be here tonight. That we're going to get. We're going to have a little spot for you, pal. Yes. Yeah, a, a, uh, a redoubted Eagles fan. This was I was looking forward to this. My friend Joel Russell, I friend was, and coworker. I was looking forward to meeting you, sir, and and having a spirited conversation with a di- we, we, This would have been great t- TV. Fucking oh, there's two fans. They're gonna they're going off this in the oh man, they're bitter rivals too. This was gonna be fucking great. And I, you better you better have a damn good reason for for copping out. I'll tell you that right now, sir. Because he he got too drunk. That's why he. That can't be a real Philly fan. That's terrible. You first of all, you can't be a real Eagles first fan. First of all, a Philly fan would never admit that. If you were too drunk to a have a Philly conversation fan at nine thirty, never, ever, ever admit that. At nine thirty p.m. Nope. You're too drunk at that point. No fucking way. A real Come Philly on. fan admits that. You may be, but you're not going to tell anybody. Well, no, you are. Yeah. But you persevere. Yeah, yeah. You persevere too, but you don't. You don't tell anybody. You continue on. Yes. You man up. I mean, you think about all those all those crazy Philly fans I, on I, Saturday I, night at 9.30 p.m. I'm you think they're going to be too drunk to be at the game? Oh, fuck no, me. they're going to be going 100 miles no, an I hour. I know it's the first quarter, but I, I'm not going to make it through this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to go. No. Yeah. Not, no. no. Mm-hmm. Real Philly fans are going to be going nuts, making the Giants' lives living hell that sitting party, on the bench. That party is starting Saturday morning. <laughs> Let's be real here. Okay, if you're in game Phil- time, eight fifteen. Yeah, if you're in Philadelphia, that tailgating is starting at noon at the latest. <laughs> yeah, maybe before for this game. So I don't want to. Yeah, and and everybody's calling out Monday. Never mind Sunday. Philly's going <laughs> to Philly, not not a lot of work's going to be done on Monday on Philly in the study Philadelphia. They're no, gonna, they're all going to be pissed. They're all going to be well, hopefully. Um, so we'll get into that one. Say that one for the end. Um, in terms of the recap, hey, look, he went five and one on the predictions. Very good. Five and one is five and one. That's awesome. So, what but did you go? Six and zero. Oh. <laughs> I knew that's why you weren't saying it. But, um, but the one what game the we, one I should have gone six and zero oh was we no, but this this game came down. <laughs> You're leading twenty seven nothing and lose. Um, but but it came down to the last second. Still, it was the last second that won it. Right. It was they were, they were tied. So that's a toss up game. It's a toss up game, and it, again, we said you know I I said it's going to be close, and I and that coach blew it, and I said he was going to blow it, and that's why I didn't, I didn't trust. It wasn't the players on San Diego to trust. It was the coach, and sure enough, yep, he every decision in that second half was wrong. Ugh, Literally man. every damn one of them was wrong. He just couldn't, and it was, if it wasn't him, it was one of his assistants. That nobody on that sideline as a coach made a good call in that second half. Because for that, to his point, for that to fucking happen, everything has to Dude, go. Dude, when they're up twenty seven nothing, I was like, I'm glad I picked the Chargers. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, how the fuck did this kid throw four picks in <laughs> right. one half? How the fuck is that possible? Like I'd never seen that before. So, Not so one half. Right. You ever seen that in one half? No, no never. Five turnovers. Yeah, one. five turnovers. In fact, they lost the turnover. Here's how improbable they lost it. They five lost the turnover five zero when they still won the game. I mean, if you're I the mean, Chargers, if you get. Six first downs in the game. <laughs> like after that, did they not? I don't know what happened, but I know. So was To your point, it. they scored before the half, and my thing was when they got it to twenty-seven-seven. I remember telling my brother, my older brother, because he had texted me, I said, "Whoever scores next wins." And it was twenty-seven to seven, and he and he's like, "Why are you saying that?" I'm like, "Because if this gets to thirteen with a quarter and a half to go, sphincters are going to tighten up on the LA sideline." <laughs> And I said, so, but if they scored first, 
Right. And, and made 34 to 7. Right. I think it's all. That's right. the thing. You put together yeah. one decent yeah. drive and score. Yeah. Just you won, won that fucking, fucking game. game. But the thing was, all these turnovers came in the Jacksonville end, so they weren't having to go on really long. I think they had one long drive. The other four were just in, inside the other side of the 50, rather. So. But the point is, but I'm talking about after all yeah, that. When, after, when, in the second half, you can't put together no, one, one drive. drive. But when but the thing is, they they got the ball first. So if I'm the set, the LA coach, I'm going. Here's what, and again, I don't know what he said. Yeah. And maybe he said all the right things. All right. I'm not trying to talk, but I would go in the locker room and I would have literally said to them, "If you lose this fucking game." You are never going to forget it for the rest of your fucking life, and people are going to throw it in your face every time they see you. But that might not motivate people. I got news. You. The, 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 if the, I was up twenty-seven the, nothing, and somebody said that, here's to me, the I'd be one pissed. thing I know about athletes: when they feel like they're gonna or they're gonna get embarrassed about something, and they're they caught, fight hard. they will fight even harder. Because they would rather, that's the pride thing of not like, and it's stupid stuff. Man, we have stupid. But the, this stuff, if someone's, po- you know, you lose this fucking game. You're going to have the greatest fucking chokers of all time. You know that? <laughs> fucking, you're right there. I don't there, think everybody's right there, wired like that. Uh, I got news for you. I've never met an that. athlete that has that, uh, that got to the college level anyway. Sure. That's not like that. <laughs> that doesn't have that bit of spite but in But you don't like, know you all these fucking, athletes today. I'm just saying I've never met one that wasn't like that. Have I met every athlete ever? No. Obviously. Look, I'm just saying. I'm saying everyone I've ever met, I've, that, that's, they have that in them. I don't know. I think, I think everybody's different in terms of what motivates them. And, and it's okay, not about now, motivation. I was never a D1 athlete. It's not about motivation. <laughs> I was never. This is, there's motivation. This is not about motivation. This is a little sense of like, a little fuck. It is about It's an motivation. attitude. No, no, it's an attitude thing. Because that's what motivates you is the attitude. This is about. So your, you're telling me it's about an attitude which motivates you, but it's not about motivation. No, you have to have it. I'm saying something has to trigger it. It's not motivation that triggers that. It's added. It's like it's, if you if someone if like because my you, no, you have saying, some some people will hear that and be motivated to go even harder. Some other people will hear that and say, "Why would you say that to me?" No, I don't know. I was, we're kicking this team's ass, uh, and you're gonna throw your negative shit on me? No, I'd say if you and blow this, you, especially if they scored right before the half, because you're going in on a sour note. I and you're saying, "Don't I, let this." Don't I don't fucking, want my team focusing on what will happen if we lose. I want uh, them focusing on kicking that team's ass. That's the point. It's all about kicking that team's ass. Is going. Don't even give them a chance to come back. Well, don't even let them think. Yeah, no. In fact, I agree don't, with don't saying even, that. that's I what just, I'm talking about. I just don't think even saying you're going to get embarrassed if you lose could almost kind of. If flip I took, it on. if I took a poll of, of how the Chargers made, to a man felt right now, I'll bet every, every fucking would say fucking embarrassed. Without a doubt, and every fucking one of them would say. But that. my thing is, I think you play worse if you're scared of that. No, it's not about scared. It's about anger. Some people are going to get scared. First of all, you it's don't get to that. Flight. You don't get to it's that flight. level. That's not true. By being scared. That's not true. Scared doesn't even enter your equation. You can't get to that level by being scared. You're telling me there aren't people out there that get scared in big moments. Not a professional athlete yes. in the NFL play. It's yes. not scared. It's not scared. Why it's not? A, it's a we got them. It's over type thing. They're not coming back from this. It's not even, they, they rest. They take their foot off the gas. Okay. Right. No. But that's then, not a scare. You then, relax. But then when they're in seven, when they're within seven points, and you start thinking about being embarrassed, some people get if scared. If you're thinking about it, that's my point. If if that's when you're thinking about it, that's too late. Because you should have been you're thinking scared. about that in the fucking locker room and don't even let this happen. I don't think you should let just keep hammering you play, the shit out of You them. play harder because you're like... No. They went to bed in the second half. when They, they literally went to bed. Because think about it. They didn't even have a turnover. Usually when a comeback like that occurs, there's a turnover somewhere in, in that kind of a run. Some stupid or weird thing like the Patriots Atlanta. Oh, you mean like yeah. uh, the, 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 ja- I mean the Chargers offense. Yeah. Right. They, they didn't have a turnover. They just didn't they do just, anything. They just didn't do anything. They did nothing. They punted seven times in the second half after not punting in the first half. That's why it's like, almost like you, you like... can blame the defense for giving up all those points, but also you look to the offense and say, you got Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler. Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. And who's the, the tight end's pretty good. The tight end's the tight good, end. too. I don't yeah, know the name. I think though. him. He's good. They, but they're, they're not devoid of weapons here. And like, any, you can't, <laughs> like we said earlier, you can't put together one sustained drive. One drive. Fuck, a field goal. <laughs> something. God. Like, I just don't understand it. And it wasn't usually like there's a turnover to or something weird happens right. that triggers this comeback. Yeah. No, they just punched. It was just like three and out. Yeah, three and out, three and out. Punt, 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 punt. That's it. 
punt, punt, yeah. punt. And then the offensive coordinator and, and what quarterback's the fuck was coach the, gets fired today. What was the defense? Yeah, why wasn't the defensive coach fired? Why wasn't the head coach fired? Oh, he should have been the first one. I was saying this. We t- I asked you the question last week. Should he be fired if they lose this game? Remember, we, I, we, right. this is and, all and I, don't, I don't remember what I said, but I don't, I don't think I would have said yes last week. Losing, but like, losing that? like that? Losing like that. Right. But before that's the game, worse than even I thought. I thought yeah. they were going to blow it. That's worse than any thing in my head of, of how they could blow it. That's on the coach, right? Like that's totally on the like, coach. <laughs> you you when you come out and your team just falls asleep at the wheel like that, that's the coach. Yeah. That's you didn't motivate him. Yeah. You didn't say what you needed to say to wake them. And this is what I'm talking about. What was said in that locker room? Well, maybe something. Well, I'll see. What was see, said in that fucking locker room? I would love to no, fly on the wall at halftime thing. of that team. Here's the thing. At halftime, they didn't feel like they lost grip. You don't need to lose grip to be, to say it. Because if you're a coach, first of all, you're a historian, and you've seen this happen to a team before. And by the way, every player in that locker room had seen it happen because they saw the Super Bowl land against the Patriots. They saw it happen. Yeah, but so they know it could okay, happen. Okay, but my point is like you're not getting in anyone's ass at halftime. No, you're hyped up, going. You we got them. You don't. Let's get them. You don't gotta get. You don't gotta get in people's faces. What you gotta say is, look, th- this is it's zero zero. It ain't twenty seven to seven. Yeah, yeah. See, it's zero see, then zero. Then I would botch that. Then I would botch that as a coach because. If I was coaching a team and they were up twenty-seven to seven, okay, and the and the half had ended kind of as a uh, wish it hadn't ended like that, I would go in there and try to be positive and be like, "That's we're... not a negative thing. It's that saying, look, it's zero zero. No, we're, no, forget I, what I just happened. I'm not saying you're that's not... negative. I'm saying <laughs> yeah. I'm saying if I was coaching that team, I would have fucked it up because Why? I would have went because I wouldn't have done that. And I think and I think. That is the right thing to do. I'm saying that's what when right. I was coaching and we had a big lead at halftime. Right. See, the first thing out of my mouth was zero zero. Right, and see, I'm care. telling you, zero zero. I'm mm-hmm. too soft, or I don't, I don't have the killer instinct because I would well, go in there and I would be like, "You guys played an amazing first half. If we go out there, we get the ball to start the second half. If we go out there and score, this game is over." And that's where I would leave it. And the problem is, you go out there and you have a three and out or whatever the fuck you do, and now it's like, oh well, shit, now the game's not over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and then Whereas, and, and then it starts snowballing. And now, to your point, you've yeah. got to get now, in everybody's face. Now you've got to. We can't face. fucking yeah, lose now, this game. Now here comes the scare. But so when you go in halftime with it, and, and again, I I coached football and basketball, and, and whenever we had a big lead, this was what I it was first time about zero zero. In fact, it got to the point where I'd walk in the locker room and I would say, "What's the score, gentlemen?" They go, zero, zero, coach." That's good. Boom, because they knew. Because <laughs> yeah. they and I said, "I like and, that." Yeah, and I'm like, the point is though, I, I would, I would. Here's the thing about being a historian, okay? <laughs> I would it, in practice yeah, now because you, as a coach, one of the things you always people, you know, people, Bill Belichick coined the phrase situational football, okay? So <laughs> for me. It was all about... Like Brian says, situational awareness. Situational awareness, yes. So um, the, <laughs> what I'm saying is is that you have to understand that situation. And when I was in practice, we would always talk about games when I was playing. They'd always ask me, Coach, what about Larry Bird and Michael? And I would talk about games and when these things actually happened in games. So I'm like, and, I always, I always, and it was always about a message in the back of their head going, hey, this happens to the best of them. Mm-hmm. So if it can happen to them... It could certainly happen to you, okay? Yeah. So you go, you could be up, and I've seen the Celtics do the, the Celtics on Christmas Day one year in Bird, Bird against Ewing. The Celtics blew a 25-point lead in New York and lost on Christmas Day to the Knicks. Crazy. Thank you for the gift, yeah. Celtics. They won the championship that year later, but but that it did happen. But, hey, we got that comeback. <laughs> so saying, well, that was an epic. Hey, listen, that, that finals, uh, that series between Boston and New York that year, seven game, Bird and Bernard, K- oh, man, baby. Wow. Was it a championship series? Second round. Oh, second round. Wow. What year was that? 84. Bird versus Magic. That was the first one. That was the one where the world sat up and watched. Stephen A. Smith to this day goes, Did he say, most let important, the boy watch. That was let one, the boy that was, watch. That, that was one with the boy. Watch, okay? <laughs> and again and again. Because Stephen A. Smith to this day says that 
championship series changed basketball forever. It is the greatest mm. ch- series of, uh, uh, ever in the history of basketball. Bird met that the whole fucking that world. One? Yeah, because that you was when that the, final. That final. It was okay. the, and it was a set. It was a, it was a bloodbath. It was a, it was the definition of a Donny. These and these two teams didn't like each other. They fucking Bird and Cream are fucking yeah. They're to tell each other go fuck themselves. R- R- Mikhail co- clotheslines Ramp today. Right, we're getting, we're getting on a tangent. I'm saying I know you're football. But, damn it. This, well, I think a clothesline would fall into the category of a football move. Would you not? I mean, <laughs> well, that's when Rambus got taken out. Dude, Rambus is 6'9", Michaela is 6'10". This wasn't a little, like a chair folding. Okay, this was a bam! <laughs> and then the benches all popped up in the announcer. You knew this was going to happen. <laughs> it was like a fucking street fight. It was awesome. Oh, my God. That's when basketball, like, you don't see that shit. Now, they're all hugging and kissing after the game. They aren't the same agent. It's just like, where's the fucking rivalry? The early 90s Knicks were like that. They were like that, too. Yes, they were. You're right. Oh, they were Mason. Yeah. Yes, Ewing. Yes, they had. They were there. You don't. We don't have those anymore. No. Now, it, this is why I wish Golden State would wake up because Golden State Boston could be that this year because of what happened last year. And Draymond Green will throw gasoline on any fucking fire he sees. <laughs> okay, I mean, he's but a I fucking mean, power. Are the Warriors going to be able to get back to the finals? I don't know, but if they're healthy, they got. They got this, if they're healthy, they got a shot because the West is wide open. Mm. Um, but anyway. Back to football. Yeah, Point sorry, is, I was looking at my phone. The, you got the, me thinking about basketball. I'm sorry. No, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about lost to the Wizards. But they're, they're in a heck of a conference, and they're doing well. Um, the Wizards, by the way, the Wizards are 10th, so they're in the playoff thing. Anyway, so anyway, the bottom line is... we're hitting threes like fucking... They can do that when they get hot. The they, it's, it's, it's that league now. Um, so anyway, but my point is, with the char- with the Chargers... I would be I'd love to have been a fly on the wall yeah. to hear what the fuck it said at halftime. Because you don't fall asleep at the wheel like that. I you bet you he did what I would have done. Because he's you another so? one of these coaches like Mike McDaniel, mm-hmm. right? Like the kind of like mm-hmm. cool young coach yeah. that does shit differently. He's mm-hmm. not an old school football guy. Yeah. At least as far as what I've heard about him. Sure. He does he's not conventional. Yeah, he's not. He's so new age. I could imagine him going in there and doing something like to what I was saying, mm-hmm. whereas more just hype up and talk positively about what you've done yeah. instead of realize this is a trap. Yep. We got to start this game yep. over. You have to start the game you over. You know what I'm right saying? Now. It's 0-0 because, zero, zero because if you let your foot off the gas, this, this team didn't get hit by accident. They're not going to quit. This is their season. Yeah. Of all the games, they're not going to quit. This is the one they're not going to quit. It's the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my thing. It's not it about. It was a shocker. Though. It was a shocker. It was a shocker of shockers. And then, and I, then you, I don't know what was more shocking that the Jags were down twenty four to nothing or twenty seven to nothing, or the comeback, because it was pretty know. shocking to see them down four picks in one half. I know, just to see how this, that happened. And this, he was. We were just talking about what a hell of a second yeah. half he had. Like he was one of the <laughs> he played as well, and he goes out. He throws four picks in the first half. But it was strange. It was Which, almost like every the first one wasn't his fault. The first one got t- the first one got tipped twice. Them. It did. The there first was a one, couple of big hits. Yeah, the first one was tipped twice yeah. by two, and then they, uh, that wasn't his fault. The the next three though, he just made wow bad throws, bad throws. And it was almost it like was with weird. every one, you felt a little like what's going oh, on, like the tension. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. And um, I didn't get to watch a lot of it. And I'll tell you right now, I would have loved to have been in that locker room. To hear what was said at halftime. Well, somebody because, said the right thing. Yeah, because Trevor Doug Peterson. Yeah, because Trevor Lawrence. Talk about mental toughness. You saw yeah, mental toughness yeah, right there. True. Nobody fucks up like that and t- t- turns around and like total opposite. Total fucking opposite in the second half of what happened in the first half. And I'm like, wow, that that kid's got balls. That kid has balls. And that's why I give him a snowball's punch a chance against the Chiefs, um, who've been sitting around for a couple weeks and don't have a great defense. But anyway, um, so that was that one. Think and about then, all the quarterbacks left. I said they're all good. But, but mental toughness all of them. is common in all of yes, them. Yes, it is. I don't think any of these guys got here by accident. I think they're leaders. This, every damn one of them is a leader, by the way. Yeah. They are legit quarterbacks. And every, they are leaders, not just talented. They are, the, they are the guy in the locker room. Every fucking one of them. I, the only one I question, um, well, and maybe it's more of a personality thing, mm-hmm. is Daniel Jones. Of course you want to say Daniel Jones. He's, he's got that. <laughs> I knew that before now you look, I, No, he is a leader because he's tough as shit. He is tough. You ever heard him on the he podium? Is, he he is, doesn't sound like no whip to he, me. He is one of the <laughs> toughest guys on the field. You that's what I'm tell. saying, and that's why he has their That's why he's the leader. And, and at the same time, he doesn't have that like personality. Like, don't fuck with me. Mm-mm. He just goes out there and shows you. You know who he reminds me of? Me. I don't want to jinx him. Patrice Bergeron. 
if, I'm telling you, he literally, that's, Bergeron has a quiet, like everybody in the room knows. He doesn't have to say anything, just, and he leads by example. Yeah. And they, his, this, his team loves him. And every player talks about him like he's the best fucking, that's the first thing out of their mouth. Yeah. He's fucking t- best leader, best this, and he, he leads by example. Doesn't talk much, but when he talks, you listen because he doesn't waste his words. Yeah. Every fucking player on, to a man says that about him. And Danny Dimes, the way when he, I hear him talk, he reminds me of Bergeron. He's got that mentality, the, the weird which thing to me bodes well for that like, this weekend. I, I never feel his personality. No, he never lets you. But that's the point. That's weird. No, but that's a professional. Like, that's a professional. That's know, what I'm but, saying. But, but like, like, but like, okay, so Eli. <laughs> Had this kind of like goofy dorkiness about him, but but like he showed you his personality, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, but Peyton wasn't like that though. No, Peyton showed you his personality. Yeah, I mean, no, Peyton showed you personality. No, Peyton was he? more. No, he was more professional. He's more on the towards Brady. I mean, yeah, there was only true. one time. There was one time where I was mad at him. He threw his line under the bus in 06. Peyton against the Steelers, and the Colts were favored. Pittsburgh went in there and beat him on their field. And after the game, he threw his fucking line into the bus. And I couldn't believe he said it. I was like, what? <laughs> and I think he regretted it because he never did anything anywhere near it again. <laughs> so I'm sure either someone called him on it. You ever like, seen the clip of him yelling at freaking uh, which one? Jeff Saturday. <laughs> Have you seen that clip? And Saturday goes right back. Yeah. Right <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I say run the ball. What did he say? He's like, what? he's yelling at him. He's like, uh. I forget what he said. What he they said? had a good bet. You need before. a pass block. I can't, I can't remember what the hell he was like. Mm-hmm. You just play center. Yeah, that's what he was like. Play center. I'll call the fucking plays. And just and Saturday turns around and yells at him. Oh my god, it was great. When men were men. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Players still yell at each they other. They do occasionally, but, but nowadays when players yell at each like other, that. everybody gets mad and they're like, "Oh, you know, this player's he's he's bad for the sideline." Yeah, they don't understand to let it go. It's it's in the heat of competition. It just you know what it means? It means you both care. Yeah, and that's a good. And thing. Sometimes it means somebody's an asshole. Too true, but you can still work through. You that. can still work through that. It happens all everybody the time. Everybody works with assholes. Yes, I work with one. You work with Yours. one. You work with one. That's true. We both we work. Both with work with an no, asshole. we both work with two assholes. That's t- exactly. Because you got to work with yourself too. That's true. That's true. Double. Uh, does he double the double asshole? There you go. We've so, got two assholes. Two assholes. Who would have known? Who would have known? Full place full of assholes. All right. We spent a lot of time on the fucking Jags game. <laughs> See, Jesus we did. Well, all right, well, look. If you want to sit there and you want to talk about the the c- uh, catastrophe that was Dallas and Tampa. Have at it. Um, Not even worth it. I said fifty-two to seven. He thought I was laugh- kidding. I th- I'm surprised it was as close. No, but as why well. were you winking and shit? Because I want Tom Brady to leave Tampa Bay, because Todd Bowles is a loser, and they're not going to fire him. <laughs> and Tom Brady will never why aren't get. Why are they going to fire Todd? Bowles? Because they're too. St- they were dumb enough to hire him. <laughs> they're not dumb enough to fire him. <laughs> okay. All right. The bottom line is Brady needs to get out of there. They're not going to fix that line. And look, but when he went back, you know, two linemen got hurt out for the year, and then one went to Cincinnati. So he was going. He was supposed to have two starters at least. He should. They would have overcome that. But that line was everybody, and everybody fucking said it before the first snap of the season. This is where Tampa's going to be in trouble. And then they had their nerve to act surprised when that turned out to be exactly what they fucking but, thought it was. But let me say this. <laughs> um, so I've really been thinking about the things you've said about Brady all year. Mm-hmm. And when I watch him, mm-hmm. he's had moments where he's looked really good. Not he many. Had, he, had, he had a couple moments in that game. He had a pass to Mike Evans after they got the onside kick. That was a vintage Brady deep ball, and it hit Mike Evans in the fucking hands, and he dropped it. Well, this is the other part. <clears throat> okay. His best receiver. <laughs> by the way, it's his best receiver. Had his career year, most year for dr- most drops in a year mm-hmm. in his whole fucking career. So his best guy he couldn't even yeah. count on. And Julio Jones gets hurt taking a shower. And and Godwin, one week he looks like Godwin, one week he looks like a guy who's coming off a fucking torn ACL. So it was like, no, but what so, are you going to do? So as I say this, like, and and looking at his stats, his stats are all there. 350. Yeah. He had a bad no. game. And he threw for 351 right. and two scores. Right. <laughs> but However, that's how great he's there been. There was moments last night where I was just like, oh. Well, yeah, if you had a line like that, what the fuck would you no, look but like? See, yeah, but some guys can take it better, and he's forty-five. That's the thing; he's forty-five. Yeah. So it's different. You can't take it better. Yeah, I he's know. forty fucking five. I know. I'm not. Look, I understand all these yeah. things, but for the first time, I started going, "Damn, like, ugh." 
that didn't like when he slid after the guy and tried to slide tackle. That him, was frustration. That was that was pure frustration. Right, and and you, you know don't what that see was? him get like that, that was a. I'll tell you what it was. It was a year of this. He knew when when Jensen went down. I'll never forget this press conference. Appreciate you saw a look on his face that I have never seen before. It was did you see a, Jensen pushing Michael Parsons last night? Yeah, I did. I love I that about that. him. Yeah, if he was there all year, they wouldn't have lost. They'd have won more than that, eight games. I'll tell you that right now. But yeah. the bottom line is, and by the way, he wasn't going to come back after three months of not playing and look like a Pro Bowl. Mm. He hit that. There's no fucking way in how that was going to happen, and that's what would have needed to happen for them to have a chance. And then on top of it, the fucking play call, that, that game plan, throw that up and burn it. Are you fucking kidding me? The one thing Dallas has set them to... Did they fire him They fired him. Oh, yeah, they fired him. They and they should have because, honestly, the one weakness Dallas had was run right at it. They ran 12 times in the whole fucking game. Tom Brady dropped back 66 fucking times. Yeah, Are you fucking do. kidding me? Oh, that's terrible. In the first half, they... But look, they ran the ball twice in the first quarter. That's well, it. because they weren't <laughs> running it the right way to run against that defense. You run... <laughs> they, they, had, they had, like... Six plays in the in the first quarter the, the, where like they couldn't move two feet. It was ridiculous. Like what do you? Well, first of all, you, where were the where was the, there not there wasn't one two tight end set, which tells me you were never committed to running because if you're in a two tight end set time, you know what that means? Two people are getting double teamed at the point of attack. Right. And that which they, is what you need. Which is what you Dallas. need to do against Dallas. Yeah. And they never came out not once in a two tight end set. And they actually have two tight ends that can block pretty good. And they didn't do it once. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? They come out there, no, and I have no problem with the no huddle if you're gonna. But they didn't run out of it. I'm like, he, what the he fuck? was throwing like those short passes. Yes, and, and lateral. Dallas's defense was and all lateral. Right. Dude, that's called that's their strength. Yeah. You're playing right into their hands. You got Micah Parsons flying around like a Dude. mad. And mm-hmm. by the way, he didn't get blocked in the whole fucking first quarter. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? Wait, let me ask you this: What game plan? I don't even know if Matt Patricia could do this. All right, my money. I don't know. I really don't know. What game plan do you have? That allows Micah Parsons to run fucking free everywhere he wants, whenever he wants. Show me that offensive game plan, and I'll show you an, a drunk, belligerent idiot, okay, who should never be allowed near a football team. Well, because Micah Parsons went whatever direction he wanted yeah. to go in, unfiltered, un, unscathed the entire first half. Well, you know what? <laughs> I was watching the breakdown of it on like, one of the shows. Are you fucking kidding and, me? And it was, I think, fuck, I think it might have been Ryan Clark breaking it down. Yeah, how they moved him around. And Elephant they, they, position. They, well, they were putting him in the middle. Yeah. And the double teams were on the side. Right. Yep. So he wasn't the one catching the double teams. Nope. And he could come right he could up come the He could come on gut. a delay blitz. But here's the thing. If you're in two times and seven, you're running, you got a hat on a hat. Right. And that doesn't. There's no chance of that happening because you're knocking them back off their tight little asses because <laughs> they're a bunch of little shrinkers. They're all speed. There's no girth in that. They're, even fucking uh, Mark Spears said, and this is what he's afraid of with San Fran because San Fran will do this. San Fran's going to line up, and they're going to knock them right off the fucking ball. They're not going to fuck around. They're going to go right in there. They're going to hit them and hit them and beat them in a submission. And then when get them to breathe, then they're going to, here comes Debo, okay? Then here comes fucking Kittle. You watch. They're going to they're gonna bludgeon this team the way the Giants bludgeon Minnesota. And I said this last week. So? Yes, I do. San Fran is a much more physical team, and they know exactly <clears throat> how to beat the Dallas Cowboys. And by the way, they're in the Cowboys' head as much as Tom Brady was, but they're younger. <clears throat> Last year in Dallas, remember what happened? They are in the Cowboys' heads, yeah. <laughs> okay? And that was with Jimmy G. This Purdy kid, they haven't seen him. They haven't seen him at all. And he's, and he's a better version of Jimmy G. <laughs> he's more mobile. That's crazy. He's a better version of him. He is. Let's be honest. He's he a is. better they're, passer. It well, they're both like... accuracy. I see why, but his arm is stronger. I think he's more mobile. That's I think accuracy-wise, they're even. But and, and Jimmy G reads defense is good, but this kid's got a stronger arm, and he's more mobile. That's the difference. He's a more athletic Jimmy G. And That's these what he days, is. mobility from the QB spot is everything. Is almost a must. It's, it has to be because these defenses are so fast now. If you unless you have unless you have a running game, right? Now if you're a running game, your QB don't have to be that mobile because you're going to be in third and four, <coughs> not third and nine. Yeah. Okay, it's so, different so when you're in the third least and four. mobile quarterback left. Is what Burrow? Um, or is Purdy less mobile than Burrow? I don't know that there is an immobile quarterback left. But I mean the least mobile because of this there's group? obviously an upper echelon, which is oh believe shit. it or not, the one who runs the least out of this group is Mahomes. Is Mahomes. Because <laughs> he um, fucking runs to make you come out of it. But him. he only runs when he has to run, right. which is smart. He learned he yeah. learned from Tom Brady. Don't run till you have to. That's why you last twenty years. Well, he's the best quarterback left, right? I think um, he's number one. Burrow is three and zero against him. 
including the playoffs. I think Burroughs. So head to head, you're putting that above resume. If you think well, Burroughs only been around a year. <laughs> he was in the Super Bowl as a fucking rookie. What? I mean, that's a pretty damn good resume. No, no, he wasn't. Second year. He got hurt no, the first year. third year, right? He's third year now. First year he got hurt midway through. Remember, he was going to Second year Super Bowl. So, so, so yes. three years. I mean, you can. He went, he's already been to a Super Bowl. Okay, but you're telling me he's better than Mahomes? Because he's beaten Mahomes' defense three he's, times? He's beat. Dude, he's not beat, playing Mahomes. I know he's not, but he's beaten that team three times. Okay, but who's the better quarterback? I think he is. Okay. Because I think the difference. Because he's beaten the Chiefs? I don't think this is a The Cincinnati defense has not stopped Patrick Mahomes. They've, these have been shootouts. These haven't been knuckle draggers. This is these have been whoever gets the ball last wins. But this is the first time I've ever heard you justify somebody being better because of the head to head matchup. When you always say it's not the quarterback versus the quarterback, it's not usually the quarterback. And this, I'm saying these defenses don't stop each other. Is what I'm saying. So at that, I don't point, think you're it out becomes playing. Who, who's it becomes who's getting the ball defense. last. Yeah, because I, I don't think any defense. Let's be honest See, here. I, I don't think Cincinnati. I think Mahomes is a better quarterback. I don't think Cincinnati can stop. Uh, Kansas City, and I don't think Kansas City's defense can stop Cincinnati. And I don't think you disagree with me on that. I think it's going to matter who gets the ball last if they if they meet. Yeah. And Buffalo's got a problem. Their fucking quarterback is, is turnover prone. Yeah, what the fuck is I happening? I don't know, but that's going to be the He lost enjoyment. Brian Dable. Yeah. That's what happened. He's not taking care of the ball the way Dak was not taking care of the ball until the other night. That was the first time Dak well, took care of the, the ball. the other night, I watched some of those throws by Dak. It, it wasn't that impressive. They were wide open. Yeah. They, they, they were wide. wide. This, and there yeah, was a couple they have fired that everybody. were real loopy and not really. These guys dimes. would catch the ball and they were looking around for someone to hit them. <laughs> this Although, was this is the same could be said for Giants receivers. Yeah, they yeah, but the point is, is that the Giants guys. The thing is, people no one expected any other Giants receivers. Yeah. Okay, the thing is, Dallas has a passing attack, and you think you think Tampa Bay wasn't aware of it. <laughs> the way they fucking played them. <laughs> CeeDee Lamb was running around. It was like people forgot who Micah Parsons was and CeeDee Lamb was. That whole coaching staff should be fired. Because the two guys... They forgot you, who their tight end the, was, the, too. Schultz was like... I, I in was the end zone. In the end zone. Like, how does a guy 6'6 six, six just wander into the end zone? CeeDee no Lamb on fourth and whatever the fuck it was? Uh, what happened? Tampa's defense was, was worse than the Tampa's offense was. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if I'm thinking about worst losses from this round, it's obviously... Chargers, Bucks. That's number one because they blew it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But God, the Bucks was pretty bad. Just it the was way very that bad. Defense just the defense. Mm. The defense after the first two series, all that happened. Dallas made an adjustment, and Tampa Bay never adjusted again. That's literally what happened. I was like, wow, you got to be shitting me. And 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 Bowles is supposed to be a defensive guy. That's the one thing that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, which tells me he's in over his head because he can't even control the one thing he's good at if he has to multitask. Right, he's, he should be a defensive He should just be a defensive coordinator. He's not even a great one. And by the way, I said this before and I'll say it again. When's the last time a guy fucked up on the level of letting Cooper Cup run right down the fucking middle of your defense with the seasonal line <laughs> untouched, unlooked at, no one even waved at him for Christ's sake, okay? And that, and, and that ended your bid for a repeat and he gets promoted? How the <laughs> fuck do you get promoted for fucking up like that? You people get fired for fucking up like that. That's not oh. a little. This is not a little fuck up. Hey, this is the guy. This did is the they guy. Fire Arians or did he leave? Arians. Uh, it was a mutual. It was a mutual thing because Brady didn't want to put up with his shit anymore. But I don't think Brady thought Todd Bowles was going to be the coach. So you think Brady maybe had something to do with pushing him out? I think Brady and left. I think a lot of people were tired of Arians. I think it was mm-hmm. one guy. Believe me, Brady doesn't. Where do you hear that though? Brady never. Because sp- Booger McFarlane. He brought them through. Booger McFarlane said that while they liked, I uh, like him. His, his act was starting to wear on people. Mm. That was uh, Booger McFarlane's take on it. I believe it was Booger McFarlane. Was Remember one, earlier this year it was one he of was the like ex, on the sideline yelling at somebody? It was one of the ex-Buccaneers. Uh, I thought it was Booger. It might have been something else. but Like Derek Brooks. There was another guy on side. It might have been Booger. I don't remember. But anyway, I heard Booger it. Was a was a Buck? He was. He was for a while, yeah. In fact, he was on. I think he was on the first Super Bowl team with Warren Sapp and those guys. Um, really? I believe he was, yeah. Um, so, hell of a defense they had, by the way. Um, so yeah, Ron I mean, Barber. yeah, him, yeah, his stud, his stud, man. They were the, Mike Allstott and War and Dunn, the backfield, they were nasty. The backfield, <laughs> oh God, they I were tough. They Keyshawn A-train. Johnson on the outside, they, mm-hmm. they were tough, man. Did they um, win it with Key? They blew out fucking the Raiders. They blew out the Raiders like I 40. Remember. I thought Keyshawn left or something, right? 
No, because did, did he come from Gruden, the Jets or did he go to the Jets? He after came. That? No, he was drafted by the Jets. That's where they wrote the rook. Then he went to Tampa. Okay. And then he went to Dallas. Was it Dallas? He he ended up in Dallas somehow, somehow, some way with Parcells, I think. Um, anyway, the point is, the point is, is that that Tampa Bay loss was was bad yeah. on all levels, and everyone's blaming Brady. Like, <laughs> and again, Brady didn't play great. No, he didn't. He yeah, he, bad, that yeah. bad that that pick in the end zone was the worst throws. I I remember texting him one of the worst throws I ever seen him. Of his career. I, said, of his career. I had went up to put the yeah. kids to bed. I came uh, back down. I was like, yeah. Brady threw a pick? He threw a pick in the back of the end zone. I think he was trying, I don't even know what he was trying to throw. If he was trying receiver, to get rid of it. I think the receiver went right when he thought he was going to go left. Because, he, no, he dropped it in. He was trying to throw oh. it. Yeah. He but thought the receiver was going to go. he smacked himself in the head. Yeah, because he was like, what the fuck? Why didn't I see him go that way? He mm. just threw it to a spot. So, I mean. Because he point, felt that pressure. He felt that pressure. And the bottom line is he didn't see where he threw it. No. So, I'm like, wow, when that's happening. And then fucking fuck Joe Buck. Joe Buck, fuck you. Because literally, when they what get to the red zone, Joe, every fucking oh, they put the thing they, they put the hex on. And Tom Brady in the red zone is 87 touchdowns and no picks. Like, Hasn't mother, thrown a pick since 2019 or some shit. Fucker, I wanted to fucking reach through the screen and fucking choke him. Dude, two plays later, he throws a fucking pick. Yeah, some and then Aikman goes, well, you, you sure they put that jig? Aikman makes a joke out of it because it's the Cowboys. <laughs> well, sometimes <laughs> I wonder if the research people or the production people go, Let's get a bunch of stats together. Of course they do. That we can throw up to fucking yeah. jinx. Well, no, guys. but they also, their defense, you want to know what he's in. The, you want, that's a stat you want to know. But they do it right at the right time. Like, that's something you bring up before kickoff. You don't sit there and wait till they get in the red zone. Go, hey, by the way, yeah, folks, but, Tom Brady is throwing his But whenever center. you bring it up, it's going to fucking hex him. Of course it is. That's why you, it's mm. almost like it was timed. Right. It was perfect. I'm like, you motherfucker. Fucker! And then two plays later, Brady throws his uncharacteristic. That's the other thing. The, the, he never throws a pick like that. Okay. I'm like, what the fuck was that? And I'm like, fucking Joe Buck. And that's why I said Joe Buck is a nauseating fucking twin. Oh, that's why you said that. <laughs> yes. I want to fucking do it. I was so fucking pissed. I was so fucking pissed. And I'm like, because I picked Dallas to win. Nobody can hear you talking into the fridge. I'm sorry, because I picked He's yelling into the fridge. <laughs> He's yelling into the fridge. Because <laughs> I, because I picked Dallas to win, because I knew they were gonna. But I was hoping I was gonna be wrong, because I hate Dallas. Um, and and don't worry, Pete. You can say I, I, you know, I love the fact because all the, you know, all the Brady things came out and how oh, he left Giselle to get blown up by Dallas. Blah, 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 shit. And I'm like, and then one guy was saying, yeah, we we're throwing dirt on Brady's grave. And I'm like. Are you fucking kidding? Finally, I'd had enough. I'd seen like 10 or 12. I'm like, I finally won. I checked. I'm like, I'm like, and then I copied it and stuffed it on all of them. After I went back up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It took you 22 fucking years to finally beat the guy. He's behind the worst <laughs> offensive line in the NFL. Everybody oh, Cowboys fucking, fans are yeah, fucking shit. Yeah, about him. Yeah, they finally fucking beat him. And they're acting like they won the Super Bowl. And I'm like, <laughs> he's 45. Right. He's behind the worst line in the league. It's and like you beating Ali when he's yeah, 70 yeah, in it's a like wheelchair. You, you fucking, he kicked your Not ass really. for, for two decades. Yeah. He was seven. You're, oh, congratulations. You're now one and seven against Tom. Good for you. Right. Isn't that wonderful? In a wild card. In, in a wild card. Good, good <laughs> for you. And, he, and no one, they shouldn't even have gone into fucking right. playoffs. If it wasn't for Brady, they wouldn't even got there. He won four games in the fourth quarter. For in a wild card game when, when he's on an under 500 team. The worst line <laughs> in 70. Listen to me, folks. An NFL team that's in the playoffs has an offensive line that only averages 76 rush yards a game. Let that percolate. Let it marinate. Let it fester. Mm. <laughs> let it sink in. Think about that number. As Martin would say, let it marinate. A team with Leonard, let with Leonard Fournette in the backfield, and he's healthy, averages 76 yards a game rushing for an entire <laughs> season. Anybody that knows football would look at that stat and go, that team's in last place. Anyway, Leonard Fournette anyway. and that back White, Rashad is White, a good back too. He's going to be. He's a, a good back, and they had by far the worst rushing attack in the NFL. So, I don't even know who the next one. So they were like twenty yards ahead of him, seventy-six yards rushing mm. in the hole. And then what do they do against a team that's susceptible to run? They run it like two times in the first fourteen plays. They call. What the fuck are you doing? Well, <laughs> like, their line couldn't just, move anybody though. But they just got Jensen back. They never went. And this is why there was no two. Again, this was play calling. They never went two tight end set to compensate mm -hmm. for that. So you get a hat and a hat, or you get two double teams at the point of attack. Yeah. They never put the fullback. They have a fullback. Then, but where the fuck was the power running game against? And by the way, when they beat Dallas the first time, they ran for like a buck thirty on them, or a buck twenty, whatever it was. And like they were, they and they lined up and they they blew them off the ball. Why? Why would you change that when Dallas has proven they can't stop it? 
yeah. against anybody that anybody that commits to doing it does it to them, and there's nothing they can do about it. But, but, but so Tampa has changed a lot since that first game. They got Jensen back. They were technically he came point, back to, for how long? I know, but he can still run block. He Didn't still knows how to like go it. down. They never. They. Oh, I don't know. They called the two running plays in the whole fucking half. I don't know whether he could run block or not. <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck did you deduce that from two <laughs> fucking plays? <laughs> I'm still waiting for a running call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that. Enough of that Tampa nightmare. Tampa got stomped. Congratulations, Dallas. Good okay. luck this week. Um, gets the real now team. let's talk about, I'm going to say, another poor performance. Buffalo? Buffalo. Yeah. Allowing a third, Miami Third to, string quarterback. Third string quarterback, Skylar yeah. Thompson. Yeah. And he actually, I'll say this, he looked, he looked decent. He had a kid's really, got, he's got guts. Yes, and he, he had a really bad pick in that game, but... Yep. He's a third string quarterback. What do you expect? And Buffalo let them push them to the brink. I got news for you. Buffalo, Buffalo is lucky they weren't five more minutes. Are you going to call him Baklava? No, Baklava. Ooh, Baklava would be. Why do you go there, man? I meant to say Bacala. That too. Anyway, the Bacala, <laughs> Bacala which Bacala. is uh, fried salted codfish. Got just An right. Italian delicacy. It is. But yes, Bacala. My, my gonna, point is... They're going to have a tough time with Cincinnati. My <laughs> point is, yeah, my point is, is that the one thing the Dolphins have is receivers on the outside. They actually took those two away for a while. <laughs> they did. And they fucking just found another they way. They still did and it. They still did it. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, like, was it their tight end they were going to? I don't even know the Geico, Gecko, Gusecki? Gusecki, maybe? Gusecki? I don't know if it was him. It started with a G. That's all I know. Anyway, yeah, he was good. The two tailbacks out of the backfield were good. Like, the third receiver, whoever the fuck that dude was, he was pretty good, too. I forgot his name. But, I mean, the point is, and this third string nobody, who nobody's heard of, comes in there and is battling Josh Allen. To- <laughs> He's matching him. He's fucking matching him. Like, how the fuck is this happening? Dude, and, and the Buffalo defense is much better than the Miami defense. I'm telling you, the loss of Von Miller... <coughs> is going to be the downfall of this team mm. because they got him and, and this is a, a difference. this is a quote from the GM when they signed him. We need a guy who can get a mobile quarterback on the ground when the game is on the line, and that's mm. exactly what Von Miller did in the Super Bowl against the fucking against Cincinnati and 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 um, mm. the man there, Aaron Donald. Those two. Oh my God, what a, what a combination they were! Can't believe fucking that's LA. Not fair. Can't believe LA let him walk. So you can't fair. believe how stupid LA was to do that. <laughs> But anyway, because that's why our defense isn't as good this year. I can't understand why we can't get to the Aaron Donald getting so why is Aaron team. getting constantly triple teams? Getting triple teams. And we still can't get to the fucking <laughs> It's like, what the fuck? Aaron's, oh, eating, that's right. Aaron's eating half of the line all by himself, and we still can't get to the pass. But Vaughn's out. Vaughn's out. And ball and when they had him, their defense was right there with San Francisco's. And since he's left, that defense has not been the same. They cannot generate how first of all, the only way a third string quarterback gets to look good is he's got to have time. Your best pass rusher is gone. And they have no and by the way, how does Buffalo replace his production? You can't. That other guy Rosson can do what he does. They don't. It's not their fault. There's only one Von Miller. They don't make them in bulk. Okay. You can go to you know BJ's and get a ton of them. So the it's the loss of like Mar Hamlin hurt them at all? Because he was somebody's backup. They had a He big, was starting. He was starting. Yeah. He was starting because I can't. Of injury, and he was playing well. Yeah, what was the guy's I don't know. safety? What I forget, but he, bigger, he was bigger bigger man. Yeah, he was the backup, and he came in, and he was playing well, all things considered, when it, when it happened. Um, so it wasn't him, yeah, but they weren't able to generate a pass rush. Yeah. And this kid had time, and then his, and again, look, any, it's, football's like anything else. It's Confidence is everything. Once you start getting some confidence, you, you your game goes up on yeah. level. It just does, because now you're like, now it's not, there's no doubt, there's no hesitation. Now you're like, I oh, fucking, I got this. And once that kid got his confidence, all of a sudden that game went in another direction. It was 17 to nothing. That's what I'm saying. For him yeah. to be able to. 17 to nothing. In <laughs> Buffalo. Right, because typically third string quarterback, if you jump on them, they done. They're the done. game's over. The game's over. Yeah, the game's over. And they were in yeah, position to win that game. Yeah. And I don't know, it's, it's tough to judge Miami, because I think that's a Gutsy, gritty performance. I'll tell you to right now, in that game, I would bring that entire team back. I know, because literally, and, and I. And but a lot I, of people the, are still in the draft. The coach I'm getting in the draft, and, and their secondary is pretty good. In the draft, I'm getting pass rushers. I'm getting pass rushers because that if that Dolphin defense gets a pass rusher or two, oh man, right. 
they can score with they anyone. can score with anybody but they got they got the same problem that buffalo had last year they don't have a guy that can get a guy on the ground a mole because especially this league all when it matters most and those guys are that's why the, the pass rushers make the money they make because they're just as important as anybody else out there they can mm-hmm. uh, they always say don't, don't they always say it's about defensive linemen when they're good don't let that man wreck the game because that one guy, like a Michael Parsons, can wreck the game for yeah, the whole wreck yeah. it. Do not let that guy wreck the game. Which is why Byron Leftwich should have been fired. Because that guy was running all over the fucking place untouched the whole fucking night. That's that you're fired for that. If you're that fucking mm-hmm. stupid, you're fired. Okay, he goes take a piss. You hit him. It's fucking ridiculous. So anyway, but back to this um, Miami valiant effort. Valiant yeah. effort. Yes, it was. I'm not. I don't want to. He's right. I don't want to take it away from the Dolphins here because the thing is, there's the other problem. Buffalo's playing with a different motivation here too because of what happened to that kid. So there was really no excuse for that to happen. Now Miami's a good team, and th- to be fair, Miami did play them. It was both games were two point three points regular season with Tua. With Tua though, that's true. With Tua, so very close game with Tua. Yeah. You would expect <laughs> drop down two ranks. Drop like down be. two ranks. That no okay, way. Okay, it shouldn't be that close. But Josh now. Allen turned the ball over. Mm-hmm. This is the, this is the this he's is the, clean this up. is the problem. He's been doing it all year. He's too good for that. He is. He he gets greedy. He doesn't. Un- Here's the you know the difference between him and Burrow is, and Burrow this thing. Burrow does this already. He t- Burrow will willingly take the check down, or the sack. Yeah, or the sack, and just hold the ball and t- go down. Yeah. So um, and this kid will just try. He he has to hit the home run on every pitch. That's his problem. Yeah. And it's going to be their undoing if he doesn't clean it up. Because you can't, you do that against Cincinnati, you're going to lose. Yeah, he needs somebody to get through to him because that's what made him elevate so quickly. Yeah. He changed, because when he first came in the league, not accurate, just a runner. Well, he had a strong arm. He could throw it the field, but yeah, he was not as accurate. No, he wasn't. You know, and becoming a better passer, less mistakes, made him get good really fast. And everybody's like, holy shit, Josh Allen's one of the best QBs in the league now. Yeah. And it got him, you know, mm-hmm. did they did they get to the AFC Championship or did they lose to the Chiefs in the divisional round last year? Buffalo? Yeah. Double was overtime. Was that was yeah, that in the lost, divisional round? They lost to the Chiefs in the, in the divisional round. Yeah, because then Kansas City lost to Cincinnati in the right. final game. Yeah. I mean, he was much better last year with the turnovers. Oh, that game that him and Mahomes had, he didn't have a turnover. Unreal. That game. that came down to who got the ball last. Literally. If he can fix that, I mean... Well, if he fixes it, then they got... Yeah, there's good as anybody out there, even without Von Miller. But the point is, when he screws up, Von Miller's a guy that can compensate for that. They don't have right. him. Yeah. They don't have him. And you can't give Cincinnati extra possessions. They're good enough. Dude, well, you got, at Cincinnati, you got to be thinking, okay, if Skylar Thompson... Can light him up. up oh, yeah, what's Joe Burrow going to do to him? We're going to score every time. Yeah, We're not what's, punting. I'm saying, they, they, I don't know if they can stop Cincinnati. Um, With but, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. And Boyd. And the, the tight ends mixing. good mixing in the backfield. They are loaded. That's a good offense. I'm telling you, they're loaded. So I don't. Their their no. line is questionable no. though. Still, yeah, yeah. And they got a guy got hurt last week. Another dislocated guy. kneecap. Yeah, a lineman, yeah, a starter. So, that's yeah. so. That's a problem. That's. It's going to be a good game. Yeah, of course right? it is because <laughs> both offenses are high power. Yeah. They both got those dudes in the calling the signal. Um, we'll get to that in a bit. But anyway, and then the last one was obviously the, the one stinker which turned out to be with San Fran and, and Seattle, which at the half, Seattle was winning. Yeah. And then all of a sudden in the third quarter, Geno Smith decided, hey, I'm Geno Smith. <laughs> Who am I out here doing playing like where, a pro bowler? Where am I? <laughs> was I in Seattle last time? Like you think he woke up from a coma. It's like also that fumble he had when they were going in to take the lead. That's when the he, he's holding it like a it, fucking. It was like, what the fuck are you doing? It I'm was like, literally like he was fuck? like, um, <laughs> who ordered the football? Yeah, yeah who ordered the anybody, cheese and sausage? Anybody order the football? Who ordered oh, the football? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh there my you are. fucking! I'm going. How are you, oh, Mr. Bosa? Did you order this? How are you a quarterback in Room the service? fucking NFL playoffs and you're holding the ball like that? In any situation. When, when, the, when the pocket is obviously collapsing. Collapsing around you. you like the fucking Titanic. This water's coming over. Look, the, and the fucking, hey, here, do they want this? Hey, <laughs> remember when I used to tell you about oh um, Danny Jones and no awareness in the pocket? Mm-hmm. And like almost being so unafraid that you're just clueless that somebody's bearing down on him? It's just like that. Dude. Like, dude, you, you didn't do that, that all season. I know. What the Talk fuck? It. He, it's like he woke up from a dream. He's like, hey. Mm-hmm. That's too bad because he, he had a great year. Is this the playoffs? We're in the playoffs? Who are you? <laughs> That's what it looked like. Because in that third quarter, those two turnovers, 14 points. That literally was the game. They were inside. Was the pick bad? I don't know the if I remember. The pick was bad, too. The yeah. pick was bad. The pick was bad. Yeah, it was bad. 
Was it a deep ball? Cross no, it was or? crossing in the middle. It wasn't a deep ball. Um, and the guy made a good play on it, but that was a throw that shouldn't have made. No. <laughs> just no. I'm better off throwing it out of bounds. But didn't it also um, feel like San Fran just likes to toy with people for a couple quarters? I got news for you. They had San Fran on their heels. <laughs> they did. But here's the difference. San Fran went to the locker room, and that coach said what that coach needed to say because San Fran came out a different fucking team. That's for shit. Who's that? Shanahan, right? Shanahan. He fucking he can coach. His dad could coach. His dad won back-to-back Super Bowls in Denver. Mike, Mike Shanahan, his dad could coach. Um, from the Bill Walsh tree, by the way, the Niners. So anyway, the bottom line is the Duke can coach. So he and knew what he to do. created. This string of they won Shanahan eleven and, and Mc, was McVeigh under McVay there? was in that staff. Yeah, they're on the Redskins. They're on the Redskins staff. They're all Washington <laughs> together. Redskins had like How fucking, a bevy of the coaches. Way, didn't the Redskins, hire any of them. The Redskins had four head coaches and now they don't have one. <laughs> Instead <laughs> of hiring guys like that, they hired Jay, yeah, it's Jay un- Gruden. Un- they hired hard. John Gruden's brother. Yeah, yeah him. I'm like, what the fuck did he ever? I don't know what he ever did. I think college he was decent. They have a decent call, but I don't care. He's not his brother. John Gruden was an offensive. He knew offense. He was that good. Yeah, yeah. He that was his that was his calling card. When he had Rich Gannon with the with the Raiders, they won. He, he won knew his, scandal as well. He, he did. He did plenty of scandal. Um, so yeah, with Obama, he was a good offensive coordinator. He really was. He knew his shit. Um, so, but the bottom line is, Shanahan knows what to say when his team's in this situation. He's been. He understands. He's a coach. He knows what he's got to say to go. Hey, look at we we're not. Look, they're fighting tooth and nail, and we're getting out toughed right now. Yeah. And this is our house. Nobody comes into your fucking house and pushes you around. Take your fucking heads out of your ass. Or we're going to be on the golf course this time tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's what he fucking did, said, and he pissed them off. And which, Not that they shit. I mean, but see, look, at, I said to you, and DK Metcalf, by the way, did I call that one? He had a great game. He fucking, I said, him. they have to account for these two. In the first half, those two lit them up. In the second half, they were like, all right, we're going to get to him. Because we can't stop them, but if we get to him and don't give him time to get to them, right. that's the demo. Yeah, that's and, and then San Fran D-line, that, that surprises me that they couldn't do that in the first half. Well, I'll tell you that's why they couldn't do it, because team. Seattle was trying to run the football, mm-hmm. hence play action pass. And they do. I mean, Kenneth Walker's a good back. When you run the football, you can stop a pass rush, but you have to stay with it. And for whatever reason, Seattle, actually, Seattle was still running the ball. When he fumbled that fucking terrible fumble, they panicked. San Fran goes down, scores. Seattle fucking panics. Now they, just, they went right out of their game plan. I don't know why. They were only down a fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, they weren't at that point. They were, they were, they were going up to take the lead. They went from 23-17 to 28-17. I'm sorry, 30-17. And that's when the wheels fell off. Mm. Once they got two scores down, they fucking they panicked. Yeah. They fucking panicked. And, I mean, and, it's uh, easy to panic two scores down. Yeah, when it to gets a that team, team like that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I can see how it happened. Like, fuck. Yeah. They got good defense yeah. and good mm-hmm. offense. And the Purdy is, was unreal. And Purdy was good on top of it. And, by the way, his weapons, they were better. Yeah. Fucking McCaffrey and Debo were like, yeah, Debo, just, just Debo, man. Six catches, 130. And that touchdown, that was a fucking five-yard out. He fucking turned it up the field. He went from five to 74. Dude, and McCaffrey, and fucking, oh McCaffrey ran for 150. McCaffrey was running through holes that you and I could have held hands and run through. It was ridiculous. By the way, that I, dude, the, the the left tackle. Trent Williams. He's the best left tackle in football. He's, he's fucking one of the un- best ever. He's unbelievable. He's playing like he's it. one of the best. He clears. And he's kind of old. I know he's, but he's he clears people out, man. There's no one. Whoever he locks on goes down. Who, who let him go? Oh, don't even get me started. Washington. You know, Washington. Just a little. You think they could use a fucking left tackle like that? I can't. The, 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 the front office of that team is just amazingly stupid. How do you let that um, guy go? To look at the coaching staff. How the fuck did you not pick up on one of those? How do you miss four fucking... When you miss once or twice... I get four times you miss? What, you mean on all those good coaches? Yeah, there's no way they shouldn't have kept one of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, just... No. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is San Fran put it in sixth gear and that was it. Yeah. So, which, you know, leads us to this weekend. Um, this this group of eight is awesome. I like Leads it. us to this weekend. We haven't even talked about Giants-Vikings. Oh, that's right. Are you fucking serious? You asshole. What I predicted is. RJ, We're not going to talk about it? We should. We, what? Talk about how the Giants. We're not going to talk about the game. Beat up. Game, my favorite game. The Giants. We are going to talk about it. All talk right. Let's stop it. and start over because nobody's going to watch for an hour and then listen to that. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay yes. two. We're going to start with the recap of that game. And then. <laughs> Move right past that game. No, no, no. We're going to spend time on it. How dare you? We are going to spend time on it. We'll be right back. Grab a, grab a frothle. Or you know who, Joe Boo.